Hi, my name is J.P. Michaud, and I am a professor of entomology at Kansas State University. Hoverflies are also known as flower flies, and they belong to the family Syrphidae. And the larvae of most species are specialized as aphid predators. There are a large number of species, and they range in size from smaller than a housefly to as large as a bumblebee. Many species are bee and wasp mimics, but unlike bees, they are capable of perfect hovering flight, and the adults are most easily recognized by this distinctive flight behavior. In this presentation, I will discuss how to recognize the different life stages of surfids and identify some species you are likely to find consuming sugarcane aphids in Kansas sorghum fields. I will also discuss their ecological requirements and some ways we can encourage their activities in our field crops. Adult female surfids find aphid colonies using a combination of visual and olfactory cues. The eggs of most species are laid singly on the surface of the plant and hatch in two or three days. Surfid eggs are very often the first thing you will find on a newly formed aphid colony. The scaling pattern on the surface of the egg is unique to each species. Surfid larvae pass through three larval instars, each more voracious than the one before. They actually cling to the surface of the leaf using a layer of their own saliva. The body can be either naked or covered with short bristles, but is often almost transparent so that the body contents can be seen through the skin. As a result, the larvae of some species exhibit the same colorations as the aphids on which they are feeding. You won't usually find surfid pupae within aphid colonies. When the surfid larva is fully fed, it will typically leave the colony to pupate on another plant nearby. The pupa is very vulnerable to both predators and parasitoids, and the aphid colony is a dangerous place for any undefended insect life stage. Allograpta obliqua is a common species which has responded well to the advent of sugarcane aphid across the high plains. It has distinctive red eyes and an iridescent gold thorax. The larva is lime green with two longitudinal white lines. This species is widely distributed across the state of Kansas. Pseudodorus clavatus is a species with wide distribution throughout tropical and subtropical regions. It may occur as far north as southern Kansas. The sex of this species is easily distinguished by the shape of the abdomen, which is far more pointed in the female. In most surfids, males can be distinguished by their eyes, which touch each other on top of the head, so the male here is in the top photo. This species has bristled larvae, and you can see the bristles remaining on the outside of the pupal case. Unfortunately, the pupa at bottom left is being preyed upon by a green lacewing larva. The genus Surface contains a number of large common species, many of which frequent cereal crops. We have observed surface species laying eggs on sugarcane aphid and have successfully reared larvae on this prey. Three different species are shown here, and as you can see, they aren't easy to tell apart, but at least now you know which one is a male. Toxomerus is another common surfid genus, with several species we have found consuming sugarcane aphids, including the two species pictured here. Look closely at the pupa, and you can see the fly within is very close to emergence. Almost all aphid predators will utilize floral resources at some point in their life cycle, but none are more dependent on flowers than surfids. As active flyers, the adult flies must rehydrate and refuel frequently, which they do by drinking nectar from flowers. Furthermore, females require the protein from pollen in order to mature their eggs. We've learned that some species will use sorghum pollen when the crop is flowering, and they can also substitute aphid honeydew for nectar. However, it's likely that the heavy use of herbicides within crop fields and the low plant diversity in marginal areas are factors that severely limit the potential of these insects to help control our aphid problems in early stages. Farmers who want to maximize the impact of surfeits and other aphid predators should consider planting a strip of cover crops containing insectary plants that begin to flower around the time of weed harvest. That concludes this presentation on hoverflies. I hope you are now able to recognize all life stages of these elegant insects 
when you see them in the field.